<laughs> well, guys, I mean, look, no hands. The tractor is driving itself to the hay yard. Hi guys, welcome back to Our Wyoming Life. My name is Mike and today I get a chance to share a project with you that is going to be pretty dang cool. Now I've thought about um, doing this for quite a while. I never thought I'd actually get to and that is install an auto steer system onto one of our tractors. There's a lot of reasons why we would want to do this. You see it all the time. In fact, it's one of the, the bigger questions that we get is, do our tractors have GPS? Do they have auto steer? Do they have auto drive? Um, unfortunately, none of our tractors do. Our newest tractor that we have, and the one that we're going to be working on today, is the 6420, which is a 2007 model. That was long before uh, GPS and auto steer came into the program. But I can see why it would be really important number of different reasons even here on our ranch. Now farmers, uh, row crop farmers, obviously have tons of reasons to have to utilize uh, auto steers and GPS plotters and all that kind of good stuff. Here on our side of things in the ranching world, you wouldn't think we really have uh, the need for, for technology like this, but that's where you're wrong. Um, every single rancher is a farmer. We farm grass in order to feed our cows and being able to do that efficiently is really important. So when I look at things like harrowing, uh, which is something that we have to do every single year, we hook up this big 36 foot harrow and we pull it through the fields. We do that in order to clean up the fields to get out any dead growth um, that's that's gone out of there. We also use it to break up the topsoil so that moisture gets down and into it. Um, I did it this spring really for no reason because we didn't get any rain and I wasted a whole lot of fuel doing it. But I wasted more fuel um, possibly with the overlap that happens. It's hard to tell where you've gone with a harrow. And, and that's one of the first things I remember the first time I ever harrowed uh, was going out there and then you know harrowing for an hour or two and then being looking at the field going, where, where have I gone already? You can't see it from inside the cab of the tractor. That's where auto steer can help um, actually keep track of that. We've uh, we've reseeded fields. We spent uh, over sixteen thousand dollars one year reseeding hay fields, and uh, having an auto steer system would help basically eliminate the overlap in the seeding as well. And during haying, of course, uh, when you're out haying, every single inch counts when you're haying. And uh, having an auto steer system would be able to move you through fields. You would be able to cut more efficiently, and that's really um, what these are all about: is being able to take what we do already and do it better. So what we've got is a chance to do something brand new for the ranch and something that will hopefully change how we do business forever again. So basically what I've got here is three boxes. One, two, and three. These three boxes contain the actual auto drive system that we're going to be installing on the 6420, the John Deere 6420. We're going to open these up because I really don't have a whole lot of background in how any of this works. We're going to open up these boxes. Uh, we're going to figure out what we need to do to install it and then hopefully uh, get a chance to test it today and, uh, and see how it works. So I guess we, uh, we start opening boxes. Alrighty guys, this is the FJ Dynamics Auto Steer System. This very first box that we're going to open um, looks like it contains uh, a new steering wheel for the tractor. I guess we're going to be taking the old steering wheel off and putting a new one on. Alright, we got some zip ties. And it looks like a, uh, a plate with all the uh, product information there. I'm not sure that must be attached somewhere. Of course, we've got instructions and stickers. Very cool. All right, all that's going off to the side for right now because we want to get in here in the meat and potatoes of the thing. All right, we've got a big old, big old book there. Maybe I should have taken a look at this ahead of time. Software user's manual, um, FJ Dynamics Auto Steer Kit. More books. There's our new steering wheel. Boy, that thing's heavy. Oh my gosh. It's got a, obviously some sort of motor built into the steering wheel or something. We'll figure that out as we go. This steering wheel has to weigh 15, 20 pounds. That thing's a beast. All right, 
We've also got some control modules, obviously. Looks like a monitor. Keep track of what's going on, right? Some sort of badge there. Mounting bracket. Screws, bolts, and things. Locks. <laughs> and more screws. All right, I think that's all that's in this box. We'll set that off to the side and move on to the next one. All right, our next box here appears to contain um, what looks like the GPS antennas for the auto steer. There's a packing list. Looks like GPS antennas on some sort of rod, more antennas. One last box here. This is a little one, but it's actually the heaviest out of all of them for some reason. What is in this box? Accessories. Oh, okay. So we've got some brackets, more brackets, a whole bunch of these things. Bushings of some sort. We've got quite a few of those. Two, three. Four, five, six. These are sleeves, I guess, for something. Okay, so that's all of our accessories. So that is pretty much it. This is our entire auto drive system that we're gonna be installing on the tractor. Seems like a lot of pieces. But installation is supposed to be pretty simple. I should probably take a look at the book. This doesn't seem like something I can just uh, throw in here. All right, so it starts out, looks like it starts right off with the steering wheel. Um, we are gonna install the electric steering wheel, and I guess to do that, we need a tractor. All right. So this is our John Deere 6420. It's our feeding tractor. It's the main tractor that we use around the ranch and a, uh, a great candidate for the, uh, for the auto steer system. All right, so let's get started here and uh, we'll start off by removing our factory steering wheel, which is something I never ever thought I'd say in my life. It's also something I've never had the opportunity to do. So we're gonna see if we can figure out how to get this off. Okay, actually just a little cap on here, which you can just pop off. And there's our nut. We're making headway here because we got the steering wheel off. And with the steering wheel off, we can now take a look at part two, or Step two, select the spline sleeve according to the steering column. So that's what all these over here are, spline sleeves, come on. And then we just have to figure out which one of these is gonna, are you kidding me? Is that it right there? Did I pick the very first one? Huh. Cool. All right, put that back on. All right, now it says, put number one spline sleeve into the steering motor and fix the spline sleeve in the steering motor with six socket head cap screws, spring washers, plain washers. So we've got our steering wheel. The steering wheel goes over like so and locks on. Then we have our nut that we gotta put back in there and that is a deep hole. Um, I gotta find the really deep socket. And I have no sockets that I can use to do that. So what I'm gonna do, you're gonna use this to try to get that nut on there as tight as possible. Very little room that we're working with here. Okay, it's allowing us to steer, which is good. So, I'm gonna call that a success. Next up is our GPS antennas. 
which are right here. This thing. Okay. And with the antenna bar installed, this is turning into a project. Um, we are gonna install a couple more antennas. We have these antennas also, but we are gonna install our 4G antenna, which is gonna go right there. And then we have a regular, this is a regular radio antenna. It's gonna come off as well. Cables to those on the left and the right. Moving right along. Okay, so we have our, this is called the IMU. Um, I don't know what that stands for. Some computer thing. And uh, we are gonna put this inside the cab in a horizontal position. Forward direction of the vehicle, four tapping screws. Well, that sounds simple. And the only directions it has for this is to say that the, uh, the plug needs to be facing forward. So we're just gonna put it Right about there, looks like a good spot. I don't know. In the cab. Pretty cool. Okay, we are gonna hook this up to power. So that's all of our antennas hooked up. All right, there we go. Last but not least, this is our driving angle sensor. So that keeps track which direction the tire is aimed. With that, we've got everything installed that we need to install for the FJ Dynamics Auto Drive system. Installed FJ Dynamics Auto Drive System is now on the 6420. We're going to head out into the field. Uh, we've got a few more things to do, uh, more calibration type stuff than anything. We're going to take care of that in the field and then we're going to give this thing a spin and see how it works. It's a beautiful Northeast Wyoming day. Uh, snow is melting. We had our first big snowstorm here recently. Uh, that is melting off and leaving us with a huge muddy mess. So we have to find someplace dry to try to test this thing and, uh, and see how it works. So I'm going to try to get us up to some high ground, probably just right outside the triangle pasture here. So my big hope was to be able to use the um, the auto stair system when seeding this fall. Unfortunately, we had a huge drought this year. We only got about three inches of rain all year long. Uh, so that led to us having to buy hay, which so far we've got $34,000 wrapped up in the hay and uh, more to come. So that pretty much took my entire seeding budget. So I wasn't able to seed at all. Um, so when it comes to using this system, um, we're going to be a little creative. We're going to find some different ways to use it. Probably not so much over the winter, but come spring, uh, we'll definitely have some new ways to use it, including harrowing um, and that kind of stuff to be able to save ourselves some, uh, some fuel time and, uh, and fuel money, I guess I should say. So um, that's my big plan. Another thing that we, we're going to do some testing with it. So we're going to set up a few paths and stuff like that and be able to drive this thing around and let it drive itself hopefully I've never actually even driven a self-driving car so this will be uh, definitely a, a treat as uh, you know self-driving tractor might might just scare the hell out of me so we are gonna get just outside the pasture here and we've got one more thing to set up and it's probably one of the most important parts of this entire system and it's called an RTK unit and if you don't know what that means I'm gonna explain it here in just a second and I'll show you what one is Real-time kinematics. Uh, it's basically GPS, but it's GPS on steroids. 
So think of the GPS in your car. And if you're anything like me, um, you get annoyed because GPS really isn't accurate. Uh, sometimes it tells you to take a wrong street if the streets are too close together. It can actually drive you in a lake, which almost happened to me once. And my stepdad almost drove up an on-ramp because it told him to turn left. And uh, obviously, you weren't supposed to. So what real-time Kinemetics does is it's basically a beefed up GPS system. And some states actually have it in place, Wyoming does not. So we actually have to create our own and that's what this stuff is back here. We're gonna set all this up and set up our own real-time Kinemetics system. Luckily, FJ Dynamics offers this as well and you've probably seen something like this before. You've just seen it. Uh, used by survey crews, maybe uh, highway crews or something like that. So this base unit is going to talk to the unit in the tractor and tell it exactly where it's at. When I say exactly, pretty dang exact. Uh, down to about two and a half centimeters is kind of the, the uh, the basic gist of it. So this thing should keep us right on track. It'll run for about 12 hours on these batteries, so that's good. Plenty of time in the field. Of course, it runs for zero time with zero batteries. There we go. Now it'll turn on. There we go. So we're going to turn it on, and uh, it's going to go ahead and start searching for satellites. Once it finds our satellites, it starts blinking and it's ready to go. So we jump back in the tractor and get everything talking to each other. See right here it's blinking and it says no RTCM stream. Uh, that is our GPS, so or our RTK which is outside. So we are actually just going to go into setup and set it up. Okay. So now here it says connected to the mobile base station and we have 40 satellites. We have the RTK up and running. I think, I think we're good to go. Maybe I should consult the, uh, the owner's manual really quickly just to make sure. All right, now we have to actually teach the computer about the tractor. So I had to put in a whole bunch of dimensions, um, basically uh, vehicle information. So I had uh, front wheel track size, the wheelbase, Jeep, you know, antennas, all that kind of good stuff. So it could figure out exactly where it's at. Now it's time to go in and actually calibrate everything, um, which I can do right here. And we're gonna go into vehicle calibration. So, and we are gonna actually start a, a regular old calibration here. So we're gonna see if everything works and hopefully we can get her going. Calibration here is super simple. Um, we are gonna start calibration. It is gonna have us set a point. So we're gonna drive a little bit away from our RTK, which is sitting right out there. We're gonna drive a little ways away from it just to make sure we're safe here, okay? and we're gonna start calibration. So first thing it has us do is confirm point A and then it's gonna have us drive 164 feet straight forward and then confirm point B. So that's the first thing it wants. We're gonna get it 160, 164, 65. Now I gotta come back. One foot, there we go. 164 feet, ish. All right, we're gonna confirm point B now it's going to have us actually turn the machine around, come back to face point B, and then let her rip, I guess. We'll see what happens. So we're going to come back around. We're going to directly line back up with point B. Okay. Okay, after the adjustment is complete, hit start to make the machine go. So I'm going to just hit start. And away we go. Oh my gosh. It is driving itself. I'm gonna slow down a little bit because I don't wanna die. <laughs> the tractor is driving itself. It is driving pretty close to the tracks that we laid before. 
Well, we're, we're within a couple inches of where we started. After reaching point A, click stop. All right. All right, about here's, oh, I went a little bit past it, but that's okay. We're gonna stop. So far, everything seems to be working flawlessly here. I'm gonna turn around again, line back up with point A, which it's showing right there on the computer, but I know where it's at because I can see my tracks. We hit start again and away it goes. We're doing about three and a half miles an hour here. And the tractor is completely driving itself. I still have access to the speed, speed control obviously, and I can stop it at any time by just hitting the stop button on the screen. So if there is something happens, boom, we can be done. And we can, you know, make sure that everybody's safe. We're gonna hit stop. Click calibration complete. Look at that. Cool. I think we're all set. So what we can do now is have a little bit of fun with this thing. Um, normally, I think in a, in a real situation, obviously you would map a field and you would drive back and forth in that field. So we're gonna try doing that really quick. Um, in fact, we can kind of do it in the same, same area that we were working here. Um, we are going to basically create a guidance line and creating that guidance line, we're gonna make this a straight line um, so that we work this field in a back and forth um, kind of fashion. So let's see how this works. We're gonna come back around here. We're gonna use this fence line as our first point in this field. We're gonna set point A, and we're gonna drive this fence line a little ways here. Take it up to about, right about here, point B. That's our guidance line, that's our straight line. So if I hit start, let's kind of see what happens here. Um, we have started along this guidance line. Okay, so we're gonna drive this way a little bit. And it's showing our little plow behind us. Now, if I wanna turn, I wanna pause that, and I'm gonna flip a Yui here. We're gonna go down this next line here. Oh, well, we missed, no. yeah, we missed a line, that's okay. There we go, it got us back on track. All right, so there we go. Now we're back on track, going down that line, working this field with our little 10 foot implement behind us. Um, learning how to use this thing efficiently um, is gonna take a while and, and I think that um, it's gonna save time, it's gonna save fuel, of course, when it does come time to seeding things. But I really wanna talk about, I really wanna show you guys is the auto drive stuff, which I think is pretty cool. So we're gonna end that task. I'm actually just gonna remove my guidance lines here that we already made. And we're gonna go up by the shop and make ourselves a new guidance line because this might be kinda cool. Here's what's gonna happen now. I have to go out and feed cows every single day this winter. And I got to thinking about how I can use this system to help with the feeding of the cows. And one of the things that obviously we have to do is drive to the hay yard to get the hay. And as we drive to the hay yard, we're driving across fields. There's not really a road. Um, there's kind of a road, but not really. And of course, in the wintertime, that road is covered up with snow. So I thought, hey, maybe I can use this thing to set up a path from the shop, which is right over here, right behind me, to the hay field, or the hay yard, which is way down there. And basically set it up so that I'm driving over the same exact tracks every single time. I've got 
very little damage to this to the to the ground because I'm just driving over that same spot. Um, in the winter time, I'm guaranteed I'm driving over the same areas so that I'm not killing grass. I'm not compacting soil. I'm basically helping out the long-term life of the ranch by doing this. So we're going to try this. I want to see if this works. I am actually going to start this right up here at this gate. This is the red gate that heads from the shop as we head down towards the hay, hay yard. This is where it would start. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a new guidance line. But instead of a straight line, this is going to be a curved line because this one's going to kind of weave. It's got to take us through a couple gates. That's a good test. And eventually get us into the hay yard. So here we are sitting here in our gate. I'm going to set point A. That's it. That's all I got to do. Set point A and drive to where I want to go. So this might actually work out. Um, really well for us and probably a, an unintended um, way that this thing's used but that's how we roll here on our Wyoming life we use things sometimes in not so traditional manners so the other thing that that actually you know could work with this is uh, you know being able to control where we feed um, I can set up feeding areas or what we what we sometimes consider or we call sacrifice areas uh, where we feed in the winter time and that's an area where the cows are going to congregate they're going to they're going to, you know, poop, they're going to pack the ground down with their hooves, all that kind of stuff. And it really does, uh, it, it really is a sacrifice area because it does affect um, how uh, that, how productive that area is going to be in the future. But if we can set up feeding areas and maybe different lines of feeding that we can rotate through and let the computer keep track of it, it, it could save uh, a lot of space and a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of soil as well, soil health and all that kind of good stuff. We made it to the hay yard. I'm gonna hit point B. I'm gonna import that. And I'm gonna save that. Okay, now it's time to test it. We are now going to head back to where we started and see how this thing works. You ready to do this? Uh, okay, let's do it. <laughs> well guys, I mean look, no hands. The tractor is driving itself to the hay yard. And keep in mind that when we do this, and using this system, it'll be used in the winter time. Uh, when the ground is frozen solid, we don't have to worry about leaving ruts. Um, we can actually set up alternate tr alternate ways to get there, and that way we don't dig ruts if it is a little bit soft, like right now. Uh, but um, honestly, like we could use this to save some of the grass that the cows really do need to eat in the winter time. Instead of having, you know, a, a whole road made, we can basically just have a few feet that the tractor has to drive over. So this thing seems to be keeping us pretty close on track. Showing us uh, right down the middle of that purple line there. We're doing four and a half miles an hour. I think uh, I'll try to punch it up just a little bit. truth coming up here as we go through the gate. Look mom, no hands. <laughs> okay, it is a little weird. Uh, I'll admit it. It's a little bit like having a, a Tesla, an auto driving car, auto driving tractor. But you know, really for aftermarket bolt-on technology, this probably isn't as bad as you think. Um, we are going to find some different ways to use this. I think as the ranch 
progresses into the next stages of whatever it may become. Um, if we're working, if we're doing more farming, I think that this thing could really come in handy, especially as Aaron's uh, market farms grow. Um, there could be seeding opportunities, some other things there. Um, in the feedlot, maybe this thing could be used to track lines in the feedlot uh, for feeding into troughs. So you don't have to, um, you know, you can get in the exact same spot every single day. I don't know. Um, there's got to be different uh, different ways to use this throughout agriculture. And it's not, I don't think it's only row crop farming. I think that, you know, when, we, when it comes time for us to reseed hay fields, this thing will save us tons of money because you're not seeding over the areas that you seeded before. So maybe in the spring, if we're able to do that, we'll be utilizing this technology there also. So there we go. FJ Dynamics, their bolt-on aftermarket GPS system for tractors. Um, I think this is something that that could help out a lot of people, especially row crop farmers. Obviously, um, the, the 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 learning curve on it might be. It's going to take me a while. It's going to take me a while to figure out exactly all the little nuances and what everything does. Um, honestly. If I was going out and planting right now, I would probably have all the time in the world to figure that out as I drive around and around and around and around planting um, whatever, alfalfa or whatever we may be planting. So this thing, um, obviously something that's gonna, that's gonna help out in the long run and over time. And I look forward to being able to show you different ways that we're gonna be able to use it around the ranch and different ways that uh, we can utilize the GPS technology. But for now, I'm gonna drive back to the shop using the steering wheel like a Neanderthal and give you my final impressions of the FJ Dynamics Auto Steer System. So there we go, the FJ Dynamics Auto Steering kit let's call it talk about technology it's just insane to me now i'm a gadget guy I've said that before but it's it's pretty dang cool um, you talk about you know where you could use it and obviously um, you know when you're seeding that's a big thing harrowing is probably something we can use it for uh, if we're spraying if we don't want to overspray, if we want to make sure we're putting that spray exactly where it needs to be gps is basically the only way to do that aside from some markers or something like that so i can see where the technology is is only going to grow um, i can tell you it, it's 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 an amazing thing and it really does it it, it it strikes the inner nerd in me a little bit but at the same time I can see uh, where farmers and ranchers can really utilize this kind of equipment whether it's brand new GPS systems on a tractor or an aftermarket system like this so some downsides to it the installation a little trickier than I thought it was gonna be um, uh, the the basic um, the manual shows that it's gonna take you about 30 minutes to install it. It's gonna take you a little longer than that. Um, but you know, you can, you, as you go, you're gonna figure out how it works. You can also move it between tractors, which is kind of cool, um, but that's also gonna take some time to be able to move it back and forth. So I think it's gonna definitely just live on one tractor here. The RTK system, the base station unit that we took a look at that uh, finds us that, that 2.5 millimeter uh, accuracy for the, for the GPS system, that thing, uh, you got to make sure you have a line of sight to it. That's the big thing. So you can put it up high, um, uh, as high as you can, so that you've got line of sight to it, so it's constantly talking. I did run into a little bit of trouble with it around the hay bales where there wasn't a line of sight and it kind of went a little wonky on me. Um, but other than that, it seemed to work pretty well. And I can see the, the benefits of it in the long run. You can check out the description down below if you'd like to take, learn more about the FJ Dynamics Auto Steer System for your tractor. Um, it definitely fits all kinds of different tractors, not only John Deere, but pretty much anything. And you can make it work. So take a look at it, see if it's gonna work for you. If not, you know what, it's fine too, because uh, really we're just here to, to show you guys the technology and to be able to show you how it can benefit farmers and ranchers in the long run. It may not benefit everybody. I don't, uh, I don't think it will, but 
for some, it's going to be a game changer. So thanks for joining us today. Do appreciate it. Check out FJ Dynamics down in the description. Take a look at their website. See what they have to offer to the farming and ranching community. And in the meantime, have a great week. And I'll see you next time right here on our Wyoming Life.